I want to talk about how I set up my crypto mining farm. It's a small one. It's by far not the biggest one I've ever seen, but it's a start. And I wanted to show you exactly what I've got, what I did to make it work. It is working very well right now. And then I also want to discuss some ideas on some other ways that this could have been done, some ways that I thought about doing it and other ways that I've seen other people do it. Currently, I have eight ASIC miners running in my mine. Seven of them are mine. One of them is a friend of mine. But this mine alone will be able to handle about 18 miners, depending on which kind of ASIC miners I get. So I should be able to double what I have in there currently, and that will be really fun, but I'm not there quite yet. So stick around for this video on how to set up an ASIC mining farm. Now the first thing you need to know about ASIC miners, which you probably already know, is that they are very loud and they put off a lot of heat. These units that I have here are Gold Shell KD5 miners. I was fortunate enough to get into the KD5 miners before they went astronomically expensive. So it just goes to prove you really, really gotta do your research to make sure you're making the right investment. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't even know crypto that well. I'm just taking you along this journey. It's been great for me so far, and I wanna show you what I've done. So I've got this back room here, and I've actually put these noise canceling panels on here. They're just sound deadening panels. And these are really easy to install. They're literally just stick and peel. And then I've got this ethernet cable here that runs to my router all the way here into the mine. I just call it the mine because it's kind of fun. It is gonna be pretty loud though. Now this still isn't 100% complete, but it's definitely very operational. There are some other things I need to do in here, but going from left to right, first thing is I drilled these six inch holes. There's 12 of them in this wall. Now this is a cinder block building. And so I have drywall and then about three inches of insulation, eight inches of cinder block, and then one inch foam and then vinyl siding. In total, it's about 13 or 14 inches completely. And that was a serious pain to cut through, but I got a big pouring drill and drill bit. I cut all the way through and then I lined the inside with metal flashing to make it into a pipe. And then outside I've got some vent covers to make sure that rain and snow and stuff doesn't come up in there. And then you can see on some of these I actually had to put quite a bit of this expanding foam just to fill in the gaps. With these holes here there is actually a conduit running along the cinder block underneath the drywall that I didn't know was there. So I basically cut my hole, saw the conduit, and then had to come down lower and so I had to fill this up. So if you're gonna do your own crypto mining farm, just remember there are going to be surprises and you just have to adapt to them. So I've got 12 of these holes and I had my electrician install a new electrical panel. So this is dedicated just for this room basically. It's 200 amps. And you need to remember that you can only use up to 80% of the amperage that you have installed. So this is 240 volts at 200 amps. So I can use a total of 160 amps. And the easiest way to calculate that is to convert everything to watts. Volts times amps equals watts, so 240 volts multiplied by 160 amps gives you the total wattage of miners that you can run. Now this is just a standard metal shelf here from Home Depot or Amazon or wherever. I do recommend getting caster wheels on it, so that way if you have to clean the room or anything like that, it makes it really easy to pull it out. And then here I have these really big PSUs. These were overkill for this setup, but they were the cheapest ones I could find, and so that's why I went with them. And what I love about these screens is that it tells me exactly how much power is being used from each section of the PDU. The PDU is just power distribution unit. And so for each one of these, I have two KD5 miners connected. And I can see that the one connected to section A is using 9.2 amps. The second one is using 8.8 .8 amps. And there's actually a KD box, a really, really small Cadena miner that's using one amp here on section C. Up top, I've got my gigabit switch. It's a 16 port that allows me to plug into about 14 different miners. And one thing I really recommend is this lacrosse temperature gauge. So I keep this temperature gauge right next to the intake of one of these miners. And this allows me to see from my phone, from anywhere in the world, exactly the temperature that is getting sucked into the miners. So I know if they're getting too cold or too hot. Now on the back of each of my miners, I've actually put this filtration piece. And this just helps catch the big and some of the small particulates that come in through the air and make sure that it helps keep the miners cleaner. And because of the suction on the miners, it actually just holds it right on there. Now you can see I also use this for a lot of storage. And then back here on the right side, I have my exhaust fans. Now each of these are 1800 CFM. 
and each of the fans that are on these ASIC miners are about 200 to 250 CFM. So there's two fans per miner, basically 500 CFM per miner. So if I have 10 miners, I need 5,000 CFM of air getting sucked out. So with those four fans, I should have well above the CFM necessary to keep all of the hot air in here moving out. And then the biggest thing was the electrician installing these. These are L630P plugs, and those are 240 volts at 30 amps. And it, which means on each one of those, I can pull up to 24 amps, because that's 80% of 30 amps. You really cannot run hardly any ASIC miner on 120 volt power, which is just a normal wall outlet in your house. You will need to upgrade to bigger outlets. You need to have a licensed electrician do this, would be my recommendation. One of the biggest difficulties was getting those fans installed because we have 13 to 14 inches of wall to cut through. So I had a masonry guy come who has a masonry chainsaw and he actually cut those holes after we uh, cut out the vinyl and everything on the outside. So that was pretty crazy in and of itself. But these are the general things you will need. You will need cold air intake, hot air outtake, some way of powering the devices, including a panel, PDUs, and L630P plugs, and then of course the miners themselves and I recommend some way of monitoring the temperature wirelessly. This lacrosse setup allows me to actually get notifications on if there's something outside of the parameters that I set. Whew, it was loud in there and it was cold in there. The lowest it's gotten in there is about 45 degrees. I find that that room in particular running those miners is anywhere from about 25 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit above the outside temperature. So here in Idaho, we get some pretty cold temperatures and luckily it's a very dry climate and that does help with the miners as well. You don't wanna get them above 90% humidity. Now, this isn't necessarily the way I would recommend that everybody do their ASIC miners. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. Everything you do is on your own behalf, but some other really cool ideas and concepts that I've seen done very successfully, the easiest one being a garden shed in the backyard. This is a really good option because even in HOA setups, this may be possible. HOA is gonna be one of the biggest limitations that you'll find. So if you're not in an HOA neighborhood, you should be pretty much good to go. But you basically get a garden shed, put it wherever you need it and have an electrician run the 200 amp panel out to the garden shed. Then inside the garden shed, it's really easy to put in ventilation with cutting out holes in the siding, putting exhaust fans to go in, exhaust fans to go out, putting filters over the intake fans to make sure you got clean air coming in. I've even seen some setups where people will have the floor be expanded metal mesh and that way they can get air coming up from underneath and then they're exhausting the heat out the roof. There are many different options, but it's definitely easy to stick one of those six foot wide metal shelves in there and then you can put all of your miners right there and exhaust that heat very easily. Now, most people will probably start in their garage. So if you're gonna do this in the garage, at minimum, you're gonna want to crack your garage door so you get some air coming in and then maybe have a window that has some exhaust fans going out of it. That may work for one or two miners, but each of these miners, the Gold Shell KD5, they generate about 2,300 watts of heat coming out of them. To put that in perspective, that's about two standalone heaters that you would just put in a room like a space heater on high. So imagine having eight of those in a room, it's gonna be heating up pretty fast. So even two of them, it's gonna heat up a garage pretty quickly. Some people also use window air conditioner units and they'll put ducting straight to the miner and then have an exhaust fan taking the air out as well. There are many different ways you can do this and everybody's situation is going to differ. You just have the electrician run the wiring, but you can really make this work in any room, anywhere in your house. Now, some clever ways that people use their ASIC miners is actually reusing that heat that comes off of them you can actually make the ASIC miner blow in to your furnace air intake and at least for the winter, use it to heat your house. Now keep in mind, it's gonna be as loud as about a leaf blower or at least a hair dryer running in that room. And so if you're okay hearing that all the time, then that'll work. Now if you're not okay hearing that all the time, there are different options like putting a mini split into the same room, help cool the air that's going in. But in the end, you're still gonna need exhaust getting that hot air out of the room. As I've helped different people get into crypto mining, the number one question is how do I get set up? And I'll have another video on how to figure out which miner to get into, which one's right for you. But generally speaking, you need a 240 volt electrical panel, ideally rated to 200 amps. And then coming off of that electrical panel, you'll need multiple L630P plugs. Now, how many L630P plugs you need is determined by the miners that you're going to run 
because remember you can only run up to 24 amps continuously on each of those plugs is the recommended draw on those outlets. So for example, each of my miners uses nine amps, nine times three is 27 amps, which is less than 30 amps, but that would be using 90% of the capacity of that outlet, which then puts it past the safe zone. So I only put two KD5 miners on each of those plugs. And then I know I can take 160 amps divided by nine amps, and it basically gives me about 17 or 18 miners that I can run out of those 160 amps. So basically I take 18 divided by two because I can put two miners per outlet and that tells me I need nine outlets. People burn their stuff down all the time because they don't do this correct. So make sure you're doing it correctly. Once you got the electrical side done, make sure you get the exhaust figured out. Remember each one of those fans is about 200 to 250 CFM. So if there's two fans per miner, expect to have anywhere from 400 to 500 CFM getting blown out of the ASIC. So then you just take however many ASIC miners you have multiply that by 400 or 500, and that'll tell you the amount of CFM exhaust that you need. And really that's pretty much it. Some of the ways that I plan on changing this is ideally I'm gonna do an immersion cooling system, which I'll have a complete other video and probably multiple videos on. But the other option is actually doing geo air thermal, which means I'll have pretty much the exact same temperature going into the mine from pipes that are in the ground all year round, which keeps the microchips inside the ASIC miners from swelling and contracting due to different temperatures coming in the air. That will make them last longer, but really the best option is immersion cooling. So hopefully you found this helpful on different ways to get a mining farm started up. Again, I'll have different videos on crypto as well as why I got into crypto. It's been awesome passive income and I do recommend it for everyone, but I'm not your financial advisor and anything you do is on your own accord. So if you found this helpful, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, be prepared.